Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now let's get on with today's show. If you've followed me for a while, you know that my rule of thumb for book sales forecasting is about 1% of your author platform. But how do you calculate how large your author platform or fan base is? There is no standard for figuring out how many fans you have, but I will tell you that it is not your number of followers on social media or your YouTube or your email subscriber base. Those are mere vanity metrics. Let's discuss what metrics matter and how they are used for book sales forecasting. Many of your followers and subscribers on social media and email are dormant. They may have followed or subscribed because they like something you did, but due to information overload, algorithms, or because they had no genuine interest, they quit paying attention to you. Plus, there are always spammers and scammers that follow you for no apparent reason. So we have to look for a way to screen out the noise and dead weight from your fan base. Engagement metrics are either not reported or are quite cryptic. Social media profile views can provide a proxy for interest and intent. If someone is taking the time to visit and interact with your profile and the content on it, that can be a signal of a fan or a potential fan. I would also suggest using your stats for the past month or 28 days, depending on what time period is offered for analysis on the social channel. Many of the social channels don't offer historical engagement stats. The most I've seen is around 90 days in the past. Using monthly stats is a good measure of your reach on a consistent basis. Going with a cumulative stat, such as adding together all of your monthly stats to get a number for the whole year, could unrealistically inflate your estimates because of fans who return to view your content every month. If you have stats that vary widely throughout the year, such as if you have seasonal type content, you could, in that case, add up all of your monthly stats and then take an average to get your monthly forecasting stat. You should be posting on your social channels and email regularly, at least weekly, every week of the year. This consistency will also help you get more accurate stats when evaluating your audience. Note that insights and analytics reports for all sites that I'm going to be talking about can change over time. So check each site for insights available and how to access them. Are any of these calculations perfect? No, but it's better than using inflated social metrics. Email and blog subscribers. Email marketing is, in theory, an effective marketing method. However, it's not the marketing powerhouse it used to be. Even if you've used publishing-oriented platforms to offer reader magnets, subscribers obtained may not be with you for the long term because they just wanted the freebie. Let's do a little bit more of a deep dive into email and blog subscriber statistics. What's normal? What are benchmarks? I'm going to refer you to a great report that I refer to all the time, and it is the Email Marketing Benchmarks and Statistics by Industry by email marketing provider MailChimp. What I like about this report is that it's based on smaller email lists. MailChimp Analyzed is 21.33%. Let's look at my particular stats, and I use MailChimp. I'm not an affiliate or anything for them. It's a free platform, up to so many subscribers, and so I really do like the service. There are a lot of great services out there, so check them all out and see which one works for you. I have been sending through MailChimp since 2016. So as I'm recording this, I have about five to six years worth of data to look at. Let's just look at some of my more recent campaigns. I send out a weekly email newsletter, and it's really just a 
summary of what I'm talking about in my podcast, my video, and my posts. So you'll see that my open rates are very, very similar, and sometimes you'll have a strange one that's either very high or very low. So on December 2nd, I had 36.5% open, and then I had 17% sometime in October. So it's all over the map, but generally, on average, it's somewhere in the 20 to 30%. For evaluating your email and blog subscribers as potential book buying fans, you want to take the total number of your email subscribers and multiply them by your open rate, and that would give you an idea of how many are truly potential book buying fans. YouTube's analytics features for channels continues to improve and provide granular, sometimes almost too detailed information on traffic and engagement. But which analytics really tell you how many truly engaged fans you have? I used to tell authors that the number of subscribers might be a good indication of fans on YouTube because subscribing could signal intention and interest. But I've since revised that. Over time, I've found that YouTube mirrors the situation we have with email subscribers. Many subscribe, but most are dormant. To determine your YouTube channel's fan base potential, go to your YouTube studio for channel analytics. And you'll see a stat for returning viewers. I'm going to put in a different time period, default for last 28 days, but because I don't have a full month here, I want to see the last full month, which was November. And I see that I had 30 returning viewers. This is a new report for YouTube Analytics. It represents people who have watched your videos and returned to watch more. I think they're engaged even if they don't subscribe. And I'm going to tell you why else I consider that a good metric. If you look at my watch time from subscribers, you will see that 90.4% of them are not subscribed, and only about 10% are subscribed. I looked at past time periods, and this was pretty consistent over time. Anywhere from 8 to 12% of my subscribed audience were actually watching and viewing my videos. Now, this is not unusual for a channel that focuses on what I would call more nonfiction type content, which would be informational, how to. I have a very high search level for my channel. So people go to find the answers they want, and then they just pop out and don't return. Not unusual for this type of content. I've polled a couple of my author friends who have more of a community-based channel. Their subscribe numbers are higher, but yet it's not 100% of your subscribers viewing your videos every single month. So I think this returning viewers is a wonderful, wonderful statistic to use to figure out who's really engaged with your channel. On Facebook, you cannot promote your books and business on your personal profile, so you need to have a Facebook page. Unfortunately, visibility for Facebook pages or business pages, depending on how you refer to it, has been declining steadily for years, meaning that your non-promoted organic content will rarely show up in your followers' news feeds. Your Facebook page insights will provide you with the number of people you reach with your page. So go to your Facebook page when you're logged in, and then scroll down and you'll see insights. Currently, stats are available for the past 28 days, which is close enough to a month for the purposes that we're using. Also, your posts show how many people you reach with each post, but that's not really a good metric overall because it's too granular. So we really want to just see how many people we reach in a month. That's what I would use in figuring out how many fans you can count on Facebook. 
I love Instagram. Not only do I love the variety of content creation and sharing options available, but their insights reports are even better than those of its parent, Facebook, or is that Meta? Insights are only available for Instagram business accounts, which I recommend if you're serious about posting for your author business. On your Instagram business profile, click Insights, which will bring you to your Insights overview. You then want to click on Accounts Engaged Report, and then you want to click on the time frame of previous months so that you can see a whole month. Click on Update, and it will show you how many accounts you've engaged. It will also show you top cities, countries, age ranges, and gender. One thing you want to also note is followers versus non-followers. This is similar to YouTube's subscriber versus non-subscriber views. You can choose to use either the total accounts or just the followers in your sales forecast calculations. I'm using the total accounts engaged since I think if they are genuinely engaging with me and my content, even if they don't follow, they're potential fans. So on Instagram, you want to use the number of accounts engaged and whether you use the total accounts or just your followers is up to you. And I would use that as your number for potential fans on Instagram. Newer to the social media game is TikTok, an app featuring short videos that are no longer than three minutes with most being in the 15 to 60 second range. Like YouTube, TikTok video content does not disappear. It does have some similarity with Instagram, particularly with Instagram Reels. Like YouTube, it can be difficult to figure out how many of your video viewers and followers can be counted as fans. TikTok's analytics are not as good as Instagram's, but worth considering converting to a TikTok business account to get them. To access your analytics, you go to, once you've converted to a business account, you go to your business suite, and then you click on analytics. And you'll see engagement. I'm going to look at, like I've done for other social channels, I'm going to look at profile views. You can look at last 28 days, which is easy to access. But if you want something that's exactly a month, you can go with custom. And then you can go for, let's say, November to the end of November update. But I think profile views is the best option because if I went with video views, yeah, 11,000 people are not my true fans on TikTok. So I would just go with profile views for this social channel as well. In the early days of Twitter, say from 2008 to 2014, it was my primary social channel. That was then. With all the noise on Twitter today and tweets being mere blips of content, how to measure engagement is a big question. Since there aren't any good insight metrics on Twitter that I know of, I use profile views as a measure of engagement. Go to your profile and click on more and you'll see analytics. So here I see that I had Profile visits of 91 for the past 28 days. And that's about the best you can expect for trying to figure out your potential fan base on Twitter. LinkedIn is my least favorite social channel, and it has been since the beginning. Analytics is one reason why. You can see analytics for individual posts, but for overall engagement, it's not available for personal profiles. Visitor analytics are only available for company pages. And while most self-published authors do indeed have companies for their publishing work, I haven't seen it being used extensively for this purpose by authors because their personal brand is their brand and not a company brand. LinkedIn is truly built for the corporate world. Unlike other social channels, Profile views may also not be an accurate measure of engagement. Many of your views are not people that truly want to connect with you, except for the purpose of selling you something. But profile views is about the best we can hope for when evaluating fan potential on LinkedIn. And you also can't filter by date. All you can really do is look at your 
number of profile views and it's for 90 days by the way that's about the best you can hope for for figuring out your potential fans on linkedin especially if you only have a personal profile and you are not actively working your business page podcasts are a hot content format but they're really not so hot in terms of engagement it is difficult to measure true engagement since listeners can't click on a link that's trackable while they're listening to the audio. The only metrics you really have are downloads and subscribers. While I'd love more subscribers and downloads, I realize the challenges of the medium. Many podcasts have few or no downloads or subscribers. Of the two primary metrics, I'd use subscribers to measure fan interest since it does take some effort to subscribe. Go wherever you are hosting your podcast and look at the stats and then find your number of followers or subscribers, depends on what the platform calls them, and then I would consider that as your engaged audience on your podcast. I've estimated that about 1% of your potential fans may actually end up purchasing your book, and even that might be optimistic these days. But you need a point to start forecasting, and 1% is a conservative number until you have enough historical sales and author platform data to make more accurate projections. So the formula is your total number of fans on all of your channels multiplied by 1% equals your potential book sales per year that you could forecast. Understand, too, that your forecast is not a goal although it may feel like it when you're struggling with book sales. Self-published authors may have optimistic goals that are way above this 1% level. Nothing wrong with that. That's a North Star to shoot for. But just realize that you should also have a forecast of what's realistically possible. I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on what ever podcast platform you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you like the YouTube video better, you just have to subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so you get an alert when a new video is up. I would appreciate it if you would share the audio or the video with all of your social channels. If you want to see my self-published books, they are on Amazon. Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is go to one of those sites, type in my name, Heidi Thorne, and my author page will come up with a list of all available titles. If you'd like to connect with me, my website is HeidiThorne.com, and I am super active on the social channels of Instagram and TikTok at at Heidi Thorne. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.